My name is Thomas E. Wagner, 3554 5569. Uh, I was in the 147th Engineer Combat Battalion, and we were amphibious, it was Special Forces. And we trained in the United States for the invasion of Normandy. When I first went into service and took basic training in Texas, then when, when, we, when, we, went from, when we went from basic training to advanced training, that's when we started, that's when we went to Florida, went to Fort Peace, Florida, and we started training for amphibious. That's when we were in, and we didn't know that, but we were planning, they were training us for the invasion of Normandy at that time. Then we went to, we went to Virginia, and we trained, in, we trained in Virginia the same way, on the Higgins boats and all these boats. Then we went to England, and we was on the water right there, and, and, and we still trained for amphibious training there. I was on what they call a landing, craft tanker, LCT. It was like the Higgins boat, only it was just a little bit larger. And I come all the way from England on all night, all night long. We come across the, I never had to transfer anything. I was right on the, we came all the way across. And I was, I had a, a D7 Caterpillar bulldozer is what I was operating. I was a, born and raised on a farm. And I was a, acquainted with tractors. You know, that's, so I was young. So I could run a farm tractor, and I guess, what do you want? Would you like to train to operate the bulldozer? So that, that's when I took training to operate a bulldozer, and then I got promoted to a PFC, then a technician fifth grade, which is a corporal, and that, then I was a dozer operator. We was by ourselves, and uh, there was maybe I don't know how many foot soldiers was on there with me. They might have been oh, 25, 30, 40 something like that, I don't know the number. You had your full pack on with your rifle, the whole works, and you swung over the top, and you came right down those cargo nests, right down into the to the Higgins boat, and as soon as you got your load, they took you in and took you into the beach. That's how that, that's what that was. Well, when we, before we crossed the channel, you never was too concerned. It was just more or less like practicing, well, let's, let's do it, you know, young, go, go. So they give you that packet on your cartridge belt, which we never used until they got ready. They passed them out that had the morphine and the sulfur in it. Then you said, uh oh, <laughs> these guys, there's a chance that you're going to get hit. You know, there's something that could happen to you. And that's really the first time that I ever give it too much thought that it was just going to be a walk in the park. And then you realize it's, it's serious business now. It wasn't practice anymore. It must have been around noon. I can't. Because when we were scheduled to go in, they, they held us back. So we didn't go in, we were supposed to go in about nine o'clock in the morning. But we didn't go in at nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know what, I don't know what time it was. Because there was chaos on the beach. So we, they, didn't, they didn't send me, the, the, the landing craft I was on didn't go in with the early in the morning, like six o'clock in the morning when the rest of them. The craft that our company was on, it got hit. And it was a, I got to think what they called it. It was a landing craft infantry. It was the one that had the, the stairways down each side. They went in on and it took a direct hit and it sat right there, it never moved. And uh, we lost several of our, I don't know how many, but there's several of our group got killed. I mean, they didn't make it in. But I was on this D7 bulldozer and I wasn't lucky me, I guess, <laughs> or however you want to say it. I wasn't on that ship, I was on this landing craft with the bulldozer. And they held me back and I went in a little bit later. We knew that there was trouble on the beach before we went in. We knew there was, everything was backed up. What was supposed to happen on the beach wasn't happening. I remember it's just a circling out there and uh, the destroyers was out there since daylight shooting over the top of our head. We could hear the shells going in. And we was out in the water, you know, we really, you really didn't know what was going on until you got on the beach. When they let that ramp down on that landing craft, then, then that's, when you, that's when you could see the beach and could see what's going on. When you go to the movies and see this sort of thing, you see the whole picture. But when we went in on that boat, we seen how much on each side. Not, we, didn't, we didn't see the picture like, they, like, like you see it in the movies. All we seen is just right straight ahead what you had to do. First thing I'd done was, was uh, leveled that road out and got that road where the tanks can, and so the tanks could get on in and go. Another job that what we did, the landing craft would come in and they'd drop their, the Higgins boat, they would drop down. Well, maybe they, maybe they couldn't get back out. Maybe they put them in reverse, they couldn't get back out. 
we'd go out there and shove them, uh, we'd go out there and shove them back out in the water so they could get back out. And that's how I got that's how I got hit with a teller mine. I, I run over the tractor with a teller mine, and of course that was the end of the tractor. And then I went back as a foot soldier. Then and the second thing that I can remember that I did. Uh, me and another fellow from the 149th Engineers, he was down there working, and we, we, I, dug, I helped dig the first cemetery on Omaha Beach with a tractor. And we dug the width of the tractor, and they had what, what they wanted to do, they wanted to clean up all the soldiers that was on the beach. They had to be all cleaned up for the, for the next day, for the troops are coming in. So they worked, uh, the 149th worked all night, as I understand it, cleaning up the beach and they put them in body bags or mattress. To me, they wasn't body bags then, they was mattress covers is what we called them. And they buried them right on the beach. And there's a marker there that the first cemetery on Normandy Beach, is, it's still marked to this day, it's there. Those hedgehogs that they had up there. Now that's what I hit was one of those teller mines. It's, I guess it was about 14 pounds of TNT that set on, it got knocked off and was laying in the beach and I run over with the tractor and of course I blew the tractor up and blew myself up with it. That's it. That, that's, that's how I got, the, I got hit in the, my eye and the side of my face. They had machine guns on those beaches, and they, they was crossfire. You know, they'd shoot they was what they call crossfire like that, and you couldn't get, it was almost impossible for those rangers and those infantry to get on the beach. They just couldn't make it. They'd mow them down. I'm sure that there's a lot of them could have been helped had they been facilities there, but there were, there just were no facilities. <laughs> 